Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com. Welcome to the update for Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. Got a free pick coming up in just one moment. Uh, it is our NFL recap. We're gonna get right to the goods in just a second. First, wanna tell you what's going on over at DocSports.com. You know about the percentage that's being discounted right now over at DocSports.com. You get 33% off the rest of the college and NFL season over at DocSports.com. And college and pro football, all one package together. You don't have to purchase individual packages in the sports. It's all one package together. Go over there to my homepage at DocSports.com. If you're interested, get 33% off the rest of the football season. Click on that package on my homepage and it'll ask you to enter a code. That code word is FBSEASON33. FBSEASON33. All one word, 33% off the rest of the college football and NFL season, DocSports.com. Real quick note, we're cutting this while uh, the games are going. We've got the Nats in base uh, they're about midway through that game as we cut this video. I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about what's going on because it has yet to go final yet. Uh, but as far as what's going on for Tuesday, real quick, I'm going to be involved in Major League Baseball action on Tuesday. Those plays will be available at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. I'll also be involved in the NHL. Those plays also available on Tuesday morning over at DocSports.com. So check them both out. Of course, football back in action. All the plays posted for the weekend on Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Games in progress on Monday. We'll catch them up on Wednesday's video because they're in progress as we speak. Plus, I want to get right to these uh, the recap of this past NFL weekend, and, and mainly we don't want to have, have to be here for 20 minutes unless we really have to because, uh, after all, it's a long time to watch a video, and last week I know I went about 20 minutes long. So, Let's get to uh, this past weekend's NFL recap. We'll start first, and I, in no particular order here. I, I talk about these as I jot the notes down. Redskins beat Miami 17-16. If you had the skins, you were up 17-3 through three quarters. Miami, though, cuts it to 17-16, goes for too late. Bad play on the two-point conversion. They fall short. Skins, by the way, sacked Rosen five times, and then, of course, he was removed from the game. Uh, but Miami did cover the spread, so positive news in South Beach. The Bengals Bengals went into Baltimore. We had the Bengals. We only went one and three on Sunday, unfortunately, in the NFL. We've cashed units in four of six NFL Sundays thus far, but not on this Sunday. And uh, the Bengals, though, were our, our lone winner against the spread. Uh, they lost to Baltimore 23 to 17, but as you saw, they covered that number of 11. But uh, listen, Lamar Jackson was good for what he was asked to do. 21 for 33, 236 yards, but he ran the ball too much, and it wasn't all his fault. A lot of that was designed. Not 19 carries for Lamar Jackson. He ran for a buck 52 on the ground. So I'm not blaming Lamar Jackson, especially now because they're called in a lot of plays where it depends on him running with the football. But it's not the way this team's going to get to the promised land. And he's going to end up getting hurt at some point of the season, just the way it goes. I don't want running quarterbacks for my quarterback in the NFL. Uh, they scored, by the way, just nine points over the final 49 minutes on three field goals in that game. Totally outplayed the Bengals for the most part, outgained them 500 to 2. 50, six and a half yards per play. Uh, since he's leading rusher was Alex Erickson, they're a wide receiver who had one carry for 17 yards. Mixon had eight carries, but a non-factor ran for just 10 yards. Cowboys lose again this time to the New York Jets. The Jets, of course, welcome back Sam Darnold. He had a good game, 23 for 32, 338 yards, couple of touchdowns and a pick. Dak Prescott, so-so, 28 for 40, 277 through the air, no touchdowns, no picks. Uh, the Jets averaged 7.1 yards per play against the Dallas defense. The thing about that last drive of Dallas, if you saw it, they were down uh, 24 to 16. There were something like seven or eight penalties called on that final drive. And then on the two-point conversion, when Jason Witten gets mugged in the end zone uh, before the ball can even get near him to throw from Dak Prescott, they don't call a defensive holding or interference. Dallas loses the game. But Dallas, zero first-half touchdowns in their last three games. A lot of injuries, offensive tackle, both tackles banged up so far for the Dallas Cowboys. Falcons go into Arizona. A missed extra point cost a chance at a tie and a potential win uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. They lose 34 to 33. One of the best quarterback performances of the entire day came from the two guys in this game. Uh, Matty Ice, Matt Ryan, 30 for 36, 356 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Kyler Murray, the rookie, 27 for 37, 340 through the air, three touchdowns, no picks. Devonta Freeman at 88 yards on 19 
carries and Austin Hooper and Julio Jones both had big days receiving the football but this Atlanta defense which is what Dan Quinn is supposed to be known for has been just horrendous absolutely horrible again this past Sunday in the game at Arizona horrible defense and here's one of the questionable coaching calls I've seen they cut it to 34 33 they missed the extra point so they're down by a point with the less than two minutes to go and instead of kicking an onside kick they kick it away it's great if you got a defense Atlanta has no defense why in the world would you kick it away when you could have tried the onside kick with that pathetic defense and of course they never saw the ball again the rest of the game and they lose uh, Panthers of course they were in London against Tampa Bay 37 26 Panther went in cover Kyle Allen now 4-0 20 for 32 227 through the air couple of the touchdowns Tampa play uh, Tampa Bay played zone defense with no one covering McCaffrey out of the backfield of the passing game a couple of times and that cost him but the big deal was Jameis Winston this guy doesn't belong as a starter in the NFL five interceptions six turnovers overall he doesn't know when it's time to give up on a play and throw the ball out of bounds four years in the league and he still makes stupid rookie bad rookie decisions at that uh, Carolina only averaged 4.3 yards per play they were outgained by 140 yards uh, but because of the turnovers won that game and covered that spread Titans going to Denver. Denver does it again, man. 16 nothing. They are two and four, and they're about 30 seconds away from four and two. Uh, the defense had seven sacks. Mariota got benched. Tanny Hill harassed also throughout the game. Tennessee 3.3 yards per play. <clears throat> the Broncos, the last two games, they held Tennessee to 3.3 yards per play. They held the Chargers last week to 3.8 yards per play. Flacco doesn't even have to do much. 18 for 28, a buck 77, no touchdowns, one pick. That defense nasty for the Denver Broncos. Saints beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 13 to 6. They held the Jags to four yards per play, three yards per carry. But a rough day for Minshew. If the running game really can't get going, he's not going to be good. Uh, 14 for 29, 163 yards, no touchdowns, and a pick. Bridgewater, another big game. He's 71% through the air in his last two games. Michael Thomas played well. Saints 4 and 0 with Bridgewater at quarterback and allowed the fewest points that they've given up uh, this defense uh, in, in two years in that game. And then all also, you look at in the last three games, the defense for the Saints has given up just four total touchdowns. Best run-stopping defense in the NFL for my money. <clears throat> The Eagles lost to the Minnesota Vikings 38-20. to It was a four-point game with under two minutes to go in the third. Uh, Diggs and Thielen burned the Philly corners and their ultra-tight coverage over and over. Secondary for the Eagles really banged up, and you saw they called out Cousins, calling him the weakest link on the football team this past week leading up to Sunday. And then, of course, Minnesota clocks him. Cousins, the last two games, by the way, 44 for 56. That's 79%. 639 yards, six touchdowns, only one pick. Vikings had almost seven yards per play in that game. Niners knock off the struggling Rams 20 to 7. No Todd Gurley. Doesn't really matter. Jared Goff has lost 13 for 24. 78 yards passing. That was it. No touchdowns. He's now got seven touchdowns in seven games going back to the Super Bowl. He's got eight picks over that same uh, time span. But listen to this. The Rams were stuffed on fourth and goal at the one when the game was tied at seven with about three minutes to go in the half. About, oh, 90 seconds later, uh, the uh, Niners were able to score and go up in that game after the Rams had their chance to gain the lead. Uh, after that, you've got a situation where they, you know, by the way, in that particular fourth and goal, they tried running, running the ball between the tackles. No Todd Gurley. Great defensive front. One of the best run-stuffing fronts in football in San Francisco. And they tried to run the ball between the tackles on fourth and goal. Fumbled the ball inside their own 20 in the opening possession of the second half did the Rams. They averaged three yards per play. Goff sacked four times. Jimmy G was a game manager. Basically, that's what he's been. Nothing special. Kittle had eight grabs for 103 yards. Man, if you're an opponent of the Niners, take away Kittle, the tight end, a little bit better than what the Rams did this past weekend. Seattle knocks off Cleveland 32-28. to How about this one? Baker Mayfield throws a pick in the end zone. One minute later, late in the half, Seattle scores a touchdown right before the half. The Browns, well, Chubb, he fumbled inside the Seattle 35 on a second half drive up 20 to 18 at the time. They were also stopped fourth and goal in the fourth after a touchdown was denied by the officials. I thought it was a bad call. Uh, Seattle's Chris Carson had the game winning touchdown with about three minutes to go. He's playing well. 124 yards for Carson on 24 carries. Another big day out of Russell Wilson. Chubb had 122 yards and two touchdowns on 20 carries, but he had that one big fumble and then Mayfield one touchdown and three picks. Not a great outing for him, but Cleveland had plenty of chances. Two of them they botched 
uh, before getting in the end zone and another one I thought they were robbed by the officials could have won that game Texans 31 the Chiefs 24 Houston 28 to 7 was how they outscored KC over the final three quarters of play Houston had 35 first downs to 20 for KC and outgained it by about 160 yards 192 rushing for Houston, 53 for KC. Deshaun Watson with the big game. He had a couple of picks, ended up not hurting them. He had one touchdown. Uh, Mahomes, 19 for 35, three touchdowns, one pick. But over the last couple of games, you're looking at Mahomes being in a situation where he's got a 56% completion rate in his last three games. Defenses are working on hemming him in. Looks like he's not 100% healthy with that ankle. And then he's got no running game. I mean, they missed Kareem Hunt from last year, who was obviously booted from the team halfway through or whatever it was last season and the bottom line is is they've got no running game since Carlos Hyde meanwhile running the ball well for Houston 26 carries 116 yards and a touchdown Mahomes by the way because of penalties that were called against Kansas City that kept moving him back on the opening possession he ended up with 116 passing yards on the very first possession for Kansas City he had just 157 passing yards the entire rest of the game and that KC defense is atrocious especially against the run Steelers over the Chargers Sunday night football 24 to 17 Pittsburgh only 18 first downs and 4.6 yards per play but they heavily outrushed the Chargers and they didn't allow a sack Snell and Connor had 33 carries combined 116 yards Devlin Hodges man I told you last week the coaches are high on Devlin Hodges uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was able to be a game manager. He did throw a pick, but he also threw a touchdown. 15 for 20, 132 yards. Did a good job of not making the big mistake to cost his team. Chargers, no running game at all. Uh, Rivers goes 26 for 44, 320 yards. Two touchdowns, but also two picks. Uh, the Chargers ended up gaining about 350 yards on almost six yards per play, but those three turnovers did them in, and they lose the football game. So there's your recap. Of course, Monday Night Football is at halftime as I cut this video right now, so uh, we're not going to toss this in on this report, but if anything outstanding happens, we'll talk about it on tomorrow's video. Real quick again, my baseball and hockey plays for Tuesday will be available 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific over at DocSports.com. We are not taking the day off in baseball. we got a couple of games, and we've got enough of an NFL NHL slate uh, where we'll definitely be involved, as I've already looked through it once in my handicapping. Do it once the night before, do it again overnight, and then we make our decision. So we'll be involved in both sports. And again, don't miss out on that 33% uh, off offer, the discount for the football package rest of the season, college football, NFL, Get it right now over at DocSports.com. All right, our free pick for Tuesday. We turn to the NHL. We're going to back Carolina off to a 5-1 and one start over the LA Kings in the NHL. Uh, this Carolina team is going to be for real all season long and into the postseason. As far as the Kings are concerned, well, unfortunately, Kings fans get used to it. Last year, you missed the playoffs. This year, you're in rebuild mode. It's a team that's just not at the level to be able to really count on them getting to the postseason this year. So another year of no playoffs for the Kings, and I'd like Carolina to get the win and I think really at around $1.55 I know it sounds kind of hefty very fair line if you like Carolina on the road on Tuesday so the Carolina Hurricanes are our free play in the NHL I'm Scott Sprites or DocSports.com let's put Tuesday in the win column and don't forget if you like these videos click on that thumbs up button be sure to subscribe I do appreciate those who have done so thus far best of luck on Tuesday right back here Wednesday by 5 a.m. Eastern 2 a.m. Pacific